Hi and welcome. Today we're talking about where to start if you're looking to build a business. Uh, thank you for those who, attend, who are attending today. Uh, and uh, if you say towards the end, um, I'll open up the floor. We'll, we'll talk more about specific questions about your business. So you come in on video, we'll talk and uh, audio or video and we'll address one thing at a time. Um, one of the key reasons why um, I'm doing this is because a lot of the founders uh, that a lot of people who have a capability to become founders and they're interested in becoming founders, they have misconceptions on what it means to start a business and the struggles of it. And um, this is largely due to uh, the struggles of entrepreneurship are not communicated publicly. So in many events, in most events of entrepreneurship and business or YouTube videos, it's all about growth and success and raising funds and how things are, you know, the, the end success of it but the struggles to get there, they're not communicated enough. And that's why I've been trying to raise awareness on what, what process needs to be followed to build a business, what things for you to factor in, what are the things that will stand in your way, and there are many things that will stand in your, in your way while you do this. And this is why uh, we're looking at how we're able to uh, uh, address this. So, um, one of the first things that, that, uh, that, that we'll look at uh, here is, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right, we're gonna talk about startup journey and where to start. My area of specialty is business growth and a lot of that content I share on Instagram, on things that I've seen during the day, meetings that I've done, um, uh, tips and findings and so on. So if you're looking for content about that, business content about that, uh, on Instagram, um, that's me. And if you're looking for podcast content about business growth, um, also if you look for Ayman Aitani, you'll, you'll, you'll find my podcast there. This is a video I wanna share with you about one of the founders of Karim. Um, this was an event that was celebrating a decade of entrepreneurship. And um, the full video is on my YouTube channel, but this is an excerpt uh, uh, specifically about getting started. And this is a common aspect with regards to founders about getting started where they obsess about one or two small things that delay them from everything. And that's why uh, it's important that, uh, that we tackle this together here today. So this was an event that I was, uh, I was in and I recorded it. I'll share with you now the full record. Uh, I'll share with you now the video on chat. Uh, Rita, if we can share the video, the, the link to this on chat. And this way they'll be able to see it uh, later in full. But, but the panel, go through the whole panel. It was very good. You know, the people on the panel were excellent. The, 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 the 10 year summary of the business where it was, of the entrepreneurship ecosystem where it was and where it grew. Uh, the, the, this was a very unique event from a content perspective. So I would recommend that you go through the full video. Now, one of the things to get started with is a common thing that I see founders don't get started with, don't get started with their business because they obsess about the name and a logo. And usually it's around six months, that's what I see, where they're worried about the name and they're worried about the logo. And uh, during that process, they spend around six months just trying to figure it out. If you think about the global brands around you that you know and like, a lot of them don't make sense. So the word itself doesn't mean anything. And uh, what happens is uh, you build the brand over, over time. So choose a name, any name, any name that they could. Even the name of, of the company I founded, uh, uh, Think Media Labs, um, I thought it was this perfect name. And, and, and with time, I'm looking at it like, well, people have difficulty saying that name. And uh, one in indicator for me is, is, the delivery guy, is the delivery guys, when they come in, they have different ways of naming the company. Think Media Labs, Think Media Think, and just some weird, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, a collection of weird names uh, that how, how they twist the name. It doesn't matter. I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, how we choose the name and what we do with it and so on. So it's not as, it will not make or break the company. What will make or break the company is the product market fit. Product market fit meaning you are providing a service or a product that people really need. I've advised businesses where they don't make sense. So the founders are not exactly super capable. Their teams are not super, super capable on paper, right? But they've figured out how, what people need in terms of a product and a service and people come to them. So even if the conversion ratios that the, that the team is doing is not great, even if their campaigns are not 
very well optimized because people want and need that specific service it addresses a specific need people overcome these friction points uh, to work with them so this is the priority so the six months where we spend to find the name is better spent on finding product market fit because this will help overcome the business and growth another aspect i want to be very clear about is your friends and family will not buy from you they will not spend a single dirham to bribe from you. They will tell you before it's live, if you ask them what their opinion is about it, they'll tell you, oh, it's a great opinion, go, go ahead and do this. If, uh, if, you if they tell you, will you buy this for yourself or for a loved one, they'll say, oh yes, of course they will. And what happens is when you launch and you're ready and you send them the links and so on, none of them will pay. And if they do, they might do it once just to you know, get you off their back, but they will not renew uh, and do that. So they're not the people that you should go around and asking them, um, is my service correct? Would you buy this, would you do this? They will not give you the feedback that you need. Those who will give you unbiased opinions are the strangers. They will, tell you, they will tell you by not buying, they will tell you by this is missing here. Like now you're giving me feedback that, that there are audio issues. So people will tell you what they don't like about what's not working. Friends and family are going to just nod and smile and so on. It's not like, it's not that they're, you know, it's just the same way when you, when, you know how it is when you have a bad haircut or a beard that's not working or, or a shirt that, that you think is great and they don't. They just smile and say, it's a lovely shirt or it's a, it's a, it's a great haircut. And although behind your back, they, they, they might discuss otherwise. Another thing about investors, no investors will give you money without traction. So if your idea stage, you're still early, so you don't have a product yet, do not spend time trying to attract investors. You can raise awareness that we're doing this, but do not expect them to give you any money. They look for something called traction. Traction meaning activity around your business. Sales, signups, bookings, return bookings, some form of activity, even if it's little, it gives them an indication that people want your service and or product. So that's why they might spend some, spend some money with you on this. But if you're early on idea stage, I would not spend time with uh, institutional investors. And I'll be more specific here. So no institutional investor. Another key component of your business, this is for you as a founder and for your discussions with potential investors and for building your whole business as a whole. It's a very critical uh, 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 a concept called unit economics. Unit economics means how much does it cost you to make? How much do you sell it for? That margin in the middle. Um, if you watched any Shark Tank episode, they look for, um, they ask questions about how much does it cost to make? How much do you sell it for? So that's the unit economics of it costs me 10 dirhams to make and I sell it for 60 dirhams. So there's this 50 dirham in the middle. Of course, there's something called the cost of, uh, 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 customer acquisition. So it costs me 10 dirhams to make and I have to spend 30 dirhams to acquire a customer and that leaves me with 10 or 20 dirhams uh, as my revenue. The cost of customer acquisition is basically, could be easily calculated in a sense where you spent 5,000 dirhams on an ad campaign, and you made 200 sales. So your cost of customer acquisition is 5,000 divided by 200. That is what you add on top of your cost. Don't factor in in the beginning, like overheads and things like this and so on. You'll need to do that later, but not in the beginning. So as long as the unit economics, the reason I stress this is I had a discussion with a founder who had a business where he wanted me to come in and advise and help him and his team. I had to decline because my recommendation to him, so he, he asked me to help him get more customers. My recommendation to him was don't go to the market to get more customers. You have to go back and revisit your business model because there's something significantly wrong there. One of the founders I was speaking with, um, the cost of customer acquisition is 15, 15 dirhams, one five. So he runs ad campaigns and he can get a customer for 15 dirhams, one five. However, for, um, it, for him to get back to 15 dirhams, the customer has to stay in his business stay a customer for 18 months, one eight. 
So for a year and a half, and during those 18 months to do two transactions per month, for him to get back the original 15 dirhams. So it's very clear saying, what is this business model that you have where it, you need the customer to stay loyal for a long time of a year and a half and to transact for two, twice, uh, uh, twice a, a, a month to get back 15 dirhams. So there's something significantly wrong in the business model. So my recommendation to him was to change the business model before he goes out to get the customers. Now, in terms of validation, so for validation of what the, uh, what the business is, is many founders, they go, they go out and they, um, build their, they, they, they build their technology. So they build the app, they build the website, they build the back end and so on. Then they go out and talk to customers to figure out what they want. And then they go back and fix. So what happens is they spend a, a big amount of money to, to build a, a version 1.0. And then they talk to customers, customers says, no, that's not exactly what we need. We need something else. So they have to pay money for another 2.0. What I'm trying to say is get the feedback early before you build. So for example, there's a founder I know, uh, she's based in Saudi. And I, I had discussions with her and she seemed switched on with her business and what she needs and so on. And I was asking her why, how come my discussions with you are better than other founders at your early stage? She told me that, Ayman, we ran our business for a full year using WhatsApp and Google Forms. So what, what they did was, instead of going, because they have a platform that matches a, 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 a supplier and a customer. So what they did was, they were running campaigns and getting awareness and people reaching out to them on WhatsApp. So she was WhatsApping the, uh, the people who want the service, and then she was going back and WhatsApping the suppliers of the service, and then she was matching them manually. And she was using forms and Google Sheets and things like this too. And after that year, when she figured out what both sides wanted, that's when she went and invested in a technology platform and built a technology platform that matches their, their need. So this aspect of using WhatsApp and Google Sheets early on would definitely, definitely helps you identify what your customer wants from you, even before you have a name. You can choose any random name and get started with it. So, so even if you feel insecure about wanting to go live with something without, uh, uh, you know, uh, without being officially ready, you can choose a, 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 a name. It doesn't have to be your official name for you to run, uh, for you to run a little bit of tests. So the tests would be you'd run a, a small ad campaign. So here it's, a, it's an ad campaign on, on Facebook and Instagram. And the call to action is send a message, which is WhatsApp. And then when people see your ad campaign and they click on this, it, it leaves Facebook and Instagram, goes straight to WhatsApp, and, and it messages you, and you can talk to your customer based on this, and you can interact with them based on their needs. The cost for this is, is not ex expensive. It's only the cost of the ads. The rest of the tools are, 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 are for free. And you'd also be able to use uh, a, a, a Google Sheet. Uh, so the Google Form here that you can fill is where they can provide information for you information to you for you to customize. So what color, what name, what things like this and so on. So things like this that you can start early to get requirements from them on what they want before you go ahead and invest in building your, 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 your technology. Because the thing is, we all start with a small amount of money. We usually have it from our own savings or we borrow it from friends and family. So it's a small amount. And we don't want to build the wrong uh, product because if, we, if, if we need to fix the product, we don't have enough money to fix it. And then we don't have enough traction to raise money from the investor. So I don't want you to get stuck there. So what I'm recommending is to get started with some uh, initial aspects with strangers, not friends and family, using WhatsApp and, and Google Forms for you to get the requirements, the initial requirements that you need. Uh, another aspect also is uh, with founders getting started is when they're looking for their first hire, they look for someone who's passionate about their idea. It helps, but it's not as important as you think. Um, I would look at uh, looking for skills for somebody who can change the role very quickly uh, because as your business grows, you will need to, uh, that initial uh, few hires, they need to change their job description very, very quickly. So I would look for that skill set and for people being able to, 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 to work, uh, to behave under pressure and work under pressure, that, can, uh, that is a better skill set than being passionate about your idea. And then another aspect here related to acquiring customers. So this is something that has to do with um, how you track 
your customers and how you can track your cost of customer acquisition. And I would move this up here, closer to the cost of acquisition. So remember you want to talk about the cost of acquisition, your, your unit economics. There we go. So with the unit economics that we spoke about, how it's very important to have the customer, customer, customer acquisition, you can do this by tracking something called the customer acquisition funnel. So you can do this as, uh, especially early on. It's very important. I've, I've, I've come in and had founders, uh, unfortunately they haven't done any of this until two or three years later. And it's very important for your business to think about this from the beginning. So it's called the funnel, where you'd look at how much you've spent to get how many people to see your, your ad and your message. And from those people who saw it, how many clicked to get to the website uh, uh, or to the app store to download. And then those who downloaded, how many of those downloaded and then how many of those signed up. So this type of conversion is very, very important to track from the beginning because this helps you look at uh, traction. This helps you look at your unit economics. It helps you look, you'd know that it costs me 20 dirhams or 100 dirhams or 300 dirhams to get a paying customer. I get many downloads and signups, but from the, th I need 30 signups to get one paying customer. So I need to pay 300 dirhams to get these uh, uh, 30 signups. And from these sort of signups, I'll get, I'll get one paying customer. So that, those type of things to think about early are very, very important for how you build your business. Another um, common thing that I see with founders is they don't do enough uh, research in the market. So I've spent, I've had cases where in one week I speak with four different founders wh where w w one, is, one is, is in Dubai, the other one's in the UAE, the third is in Kuwait, and the fourth is in Riyadh or Egypt. And each of them are solving similar issues and they have no idea about each other. Although each have been publicly available for a while. So it's very important that you spend time to understand what others are doing in the market for you to see what problems have they covered, that what, where the opportunity lies and so on. So spend time, look at the app stores, uh, look at startup databases, participate in startup events, um, look at press releases that talk about raising funds and so on. So that, those are aspects that can really help you identify others in the market. One thing I wanna close with, uh, before we open up the floor for your questions, is building a business is very, very hard. Uh, when you're getting started as a founder, you look at videos on the internet about people who are su successful. You look at people who are on stage in startup events and they, they talk about their success and so on. What people don't talk about enough is the problems that are faced on a, a, in a business level uh, between the founders at home, uh, with your family and wife and kids, and depending on where you are in your, um, uh, in your personal progress. All so what startup is about is about problem solving every day, every day, every day, every day. So it is very, very hard. So I want to be very clear that our role as founders is to identify problems to fix. That's all we do every day. So you need to have that expectation that building the business is super, super, super hard. Another thing that I'd recommend you do is that, and that took me a long time personally for me to get there, is that whenever something good happens, take 10 minutes and let it enjoy it and soak it in. Because the next time you check your email or you pick up your phone or, 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 or check your WhatsApp, there's gonna be a problem for you to address. So whenever you get something good, which is a, you know, a, a completed project, a, a payment you received, a new customer you signed, just take 10 minutes, enjoy that, uh, before you go into the mess of your day. It took me a long time to build that habit because usually I, 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 I get confirmation from customer, good customer, like great, thanks. I archive the email and I, and I go back to other things. And then I learned with time that no, take that 10 minutes, enjoy it because you know we have enough problems throughout the day to, 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 to take care of. And then it takes time, it takes time. Uh, it's not within a year or two or three that you'll reach that growth that you want. It's going to take you time. And the way that you can shorten that time, there's, unfortunately, it comes at the own expense of your own personal time. So that, that means nights and weekends. So that's, that's the way for you. Instead of spending a 40-hour work week, your 40-hour work week becomes 60, 70, 80-hour work week, and sometimes 100. This way you can shorten uh, the period of time. But that can only happen if you spend extensive amounts of time away from uh, 
family, friends, and personal, personal aspects of it. So the choice of you to becoming a founder is not straightforward. Uh, there are rewards, but I want you to go into this knowing that it is tough. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to open the floor to questions and to see, to see what you guys need. Uh, what are questions that I can, I can answer? It could be about how to acquire customers. It could be about what to build, how to build, how to validate, how, how to validate the idea. It could be uh, what are things that, that you're looking for in the market. It could be a, a bunch of different things. So whatever aspects that you would like me to cover, I'm, I'm happy here to cover. And also uh, we could, if you want, I can do a separate advisory one-on-one -on -one session with you. And uh, the only ask here is that we record it for other founders uh, to, benefit from, to benefit from. And I also want to remind you about the webinar uh, next week. Uh, the link is in the chat uh, for, you, uh, for you to register and attend for next week. If you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to me on Instagram. And the podcast is there as well. And I'm sending out emails uh, for, the, uh, for the registrations here. Okay. Thank you, guys. I will talk soon. I'm a little bit of 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 a little